be against the law, I'm fairly certain. Uh, man, uh, to allow all the things that have gone on with the police department to continue, uh, you're setting this city up for bankruptcy. I mean, I listed all those things that I listed in Vox Pop that you could be sued for. I mean, how is, how is he doing the best interest of this city when you're, when he's just overlooking things that we can be sued for and then they're literally gonna bankrupt you because the two or three people that I know personally that could sue this city will sue the pants off of y'all. And I look forward to it. Uh, you have so many people in line to sue this city. I'm just curious if this is the best option we have because shame on this city for using legal counsel that is overlooking anything that doesn't line the pockets of the richest people in this community. Yeah. A lawyer that has the interest of protecting property and profit over the most vulnerable citizens who allows this council to pick and choose the rules that are followed and who they are imposed upon. Yeah. And I just wonder now how many, because I didn't know you were in office since uh, 2016, I'm just curious, how many lawsuits have been brought against this city in that amount of time? And how many of those lawsuits were escalated from the 2020 protests for George Floyd's death. Because I mean, just since then, and since I've been coming to this meeting, I've literally heard numerous things that we could be sued for. And you just have a blinder over them. And then you go dig into people's trash. Shame on y'all. Shame on all of you. I, shame. Shame. That's that thick sticks, the thick stacks of paper. Mm -hmm. um, you can see what a small population this city has. And yeah. then those are the code enforcement violations. Not only do they embarrass people by publicly posting them, but the, the significant amount of, of paperwork that is done for code enforcement in this city. And that is why we need it taken out of the police hands and put back into like they were saying in the meeting back into code code enforcement should not be in the police hands mm -hmm. so because i mean just look at this it's disgusting right. every single one of these we have such a small city mm -hmm. to be what is this how they get funded mm -hmm. because it's disgusting taking money out of our pockets mm -hmm. we can't feed our children we have to work two jobs but they want to give us $158 red light tickets or they want to, you know, God forbid you don't cut your grass in the month of June or July or August when it's growing like weeds. It has been an uptick in it because one of them came by my house and was talking about my garbage. And I'm like, that has never happened before where someone came out and literally it was the cold and poisonous people. And I'm like, trash go out tonight. <laughs> And now you have to concern yourself with the idea, are they going to bring eight police officers to your home to enforce that? Because they certainly did with, you know, community members that we've talked to. Mm. No. Okay. So do you can... Anyone else? One down, right? One down. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. I didn't really know this was on the agenda, so it's kind of off the cuff, but I just feel like after <coughs> the thousands of dollars that I've spent on public records, um, which have become extremely hard to get now because I'm being charged the cost of the attorney and the city manager now. Um, I feel like the relationship though between the city manager and the city attorney is very inappropriate. Mm. And it has just, it really is opening you guys up to liability, but it is just stepped over a line of professionalism mm. that I don't feel like you can come back from. So I think that giving him another or reinstating his contract is an awful idea, a really awful idea. I think that we need a new attorney, honestly. Not the first city manager. Thank you. What relationship? Now we gotta ask, I gotta ask about that. I'm not here to speak against Mr. Driscoll. In fact, my relationships with him have been positive. And one in particular is when administration did not want to sign a verification on the zoning form for a low income housing tax credit project. And I talked to Mr. Driscoll about it, and he convinced the administration that it had to be signed. So he's open to discussions about things. But the problem I have with this agenda, this agenda item is terrible. Now, one thing I talked to the city manager about when I ran is a lot of her agenda is not past muster. This is the fifth addendum to the contract with Mr. Driscoll. If you read the agenda and you read the addendum, you have no idea what his rate is. You have no idea who he reports to. You have no idea if he can subcontract. You don't have that idea. So I asked the city council 
in future agendas that are addendums, the only related addendums the original contract are attached because there's no transparency to the residents of the city. Now you all meet with the city council, the city manager every week, and she goes over the agenda items with you. We don't have that as residents. The only way we know this stuff is reading the agenda itself. This means you need to list all this stuff there because we're not getting educated on these issues. We need to know. And again, I support Mr. Driscoll, um, but the process is flawed. Thank you, Rick. <clears throat> Don't have to state my address for this part, though. Um, quickly, since we're speaking on a legal standpoint, um, we all know what happened to me with Officer Valente. Um, I honestly feel that Mr. Driscoll there um, and city manager, there were other officers that were involved with my arrest that you guys kind of swept under the rug that treated me kind of inhumane. Um, so I'm just wondering what are my statutes of limitations on my incident? I mean, it's, it's relevant to what we're talking about. He's gonna be, he's trying to renew his contract. Mm. Yeah, I don't answer anything, do you? But I, I, we would have to answer your questions if it came down to it. So, so let's talk about what. So what happened tonight? Do you consider it a victory for the people? <laughs> it's a huge step. It's a huge it's step. It's a huge step. Mm -hmm. uh, just the fact that they're actually kind of listening now and are actually going to look into things. Um, so we feel good about it, man. That we didn't. I was in shock when. when so uh, what happened to the people? What happened? Okay, so basically what happened? They went. They uh, went to renew um, our city attorney's contract. Um, they were going to approve that tonight at the council meeting, but some council members. Um, and some citizens brought up some very important, very, see you later, very important facts that they need to look into some allegations of our city attorney before they renew anything with him. And the council members agreed. The mayor agreed. So that's a huge step for us. So, yeah, it's a pretty good night. Yeah. Pretty good night. Great okay. night. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you.
So who, who, who is in charge of this? Who, whose desk does this go by and signs off on this? I was wrongfully arrested, wrongfully imprisoned, and had to deal with the police officers laughing and destroying my name and character for two and a half years. The city attorney could have dropped the case. They could have all dropped the case, but nobody did. They pursued me to the fullest extent of the law, and I was acquitted. Let me remind the council on May 5th of 2022, as many of you all know, and were made aware via text. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing no one else coming forward, I'll bring back council. Consider it a win or a, a, a I consider, um, I'm just happy that the public has come out. Um, I don't consider it a win because this is, you know, we have to win the battle, but the war is still not over. And when I say war, I speak in a peaceful sense, but we still have to uncover, you know, let many things that have been under the carpet come to the light, you feel me? And... I think tonight they heard us because this is the first time in, in two and a half years that they actually stopped and addressed us. Yeah. So they felt such a presence and they heard such conviction from all of the stories that they literally had to address it. You cannot say nothing when all that stuff is yeah. coming out. You, you have to say something. Mm -hmm. And some of the council members did the right thing and they said what was right. Let's look at this. Why are we gonna keep hiring right. a city attorney yeah. who's digging through people's trash with code enforcement and using the police as a Gestapo regime to hunt down low-income houses and stuff. This stuff has to stop. And soon, once I read this book in Danish, I'm gonna be able to tell y'all in Danish. <laughs> but on all serious note, thank you to everybody that came out today. I mean, it's the love and support from the community is unreal, and it takes a community to, to really do what we're doing. to 
illustrated some applications of things that have been said about the behavior and the manner in which we've handled our code enforcement. But I have uh, advocated publicly for the code enforcement to be an arm of the planning department. Um, and it appears as if, uh, as I have observed, um, some of this manner in which the city embarks on its code uh, efforts, particularly uh, I witnessed the um, the code action against Juan Paco, who had done some construction without a permit, incorrectly, and should have been cited. But I did see that the city came with quite an effort uh, to incorporate, to include fire, building, police, mm -hmm. um, and, and and so I, I am concerned about the way in which this is. Well. It doesn't mean that it, it, that it uh, falls on you as the attorney, uh, but I am unable to, uh, I'm unable to have a clear understanding of, uh, of some of these legal issues that the city Looking has to right now. Back in his seat. He's back. We are restricted. We have a closed meeting because I understand we have lawsuits now. Uh, if we don't, then that's we do not, okay, but it had been suggested that we had. Um, so uh, I had asked if we have some discussion about this. Uh, it's uh, a lot of stuff that's been thrown at the staff, and uh, I think uh, there needs to be some kind of response in terms of, uh, of uh, these allegations, but um, I'm not agreeing or not suggesting that it's um, anything more than just a, it's a question to me. Uh, that he we is. need to let he everyone is. in the city know that we care yes, about I it. Do. I care very much about the important public projects that we have. And I'm hearing yeah. disparagement of pretty buildings as if it's a wrong thing. Um, I personally have been one of the people to tell you, Debbie, and send you pictures of individuals sleeping on the bridge mm. uh, that shouldn't be sleeping there. Mm. And it doesn't mean that- Where should they be sleeping? It, it, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have some kind of a process to deal with our homelessness or our drug addictions. And I know every family has somebody they know who has suffered with that problem. And I have it in my own family. Um, and it's a terrible thing. Um, so there's a right way to handle things. Mm. Uh, it's not to be attacked, mm. uh, but obviously uh, there's a sore, and uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to try to heal it. your comments in there today I was going to ask you if you minded further talking about some of the things that you discussed. I'd be happy to. Can, I, can we set a time to do it versus yeah, sure. right now? Yeah. Let me give you my cell phone number. Okay. Okay. 727-277. Mm -hmm. No investigation department for the city council. Then and you go to let's say you want to complain about the city manager and you go to the mayor and the mayor doesn't care. You can talk to all five of us. Oh, okay. yeah. There's, there's no, there's yeah, no yeah. stopping yeah. you yeah. talking to me. Yeah. What's stopping is me talking with my elected Absolutely. officials about an action that we're going to take Absolutely. at a future yeah. meeting. Yeah. So yes, we sir. can talk all day. You just can't go and tell that other person. Well, Pete said he would do this if you right. do that. So you can't play. Right. You can. You so can. Police. But you can talk to each one of us individually. Uh, that we just have this restriction that everything we do has to be public. I'm familiar because I go to school board meetings like. to say anything because I was apparently under the misunderstanding that uh, Mr. Jones and the lady next to him uh, had thought
both file uh, lawsuits against the city, which keeps me from saying anything in public about either one of those issues. Um, well, if that's not the case, I will. Just so I can clarify, Mr. Mayor, we do have a claim. Uh, oh, okay. To file the claim. It's just not a claim. Oh, okay. So that's a lawsuit. Because the process takes okay. so long that we haven't paid it yet. Well, you're not doing your job. Cox, <laughs> one more outburst, and I will ask you to be removed. No, this is not public discussion. I understand, no. but after a notice no, of this is of not, 30 days, which is why this is not passing. Mr. Driscoll. Mr. Mayor, so just for the record, the, the procedure when the city receives a claim like that, and we get a statute for a notice of a pending lawsuit, those are immediately turned over to insurance, and the insurance handles those through the lawyers that are retained by the insurance company. Those are not handled by my office. So at this time, those claim, any claims that the city has received have been turned over to the city's insurance carrier. But you're aware. But the, the, you are still advised, however, not to discuss those pending claims. <coughs> so then you can't say yes or no. Okay. A lot of a lot of accusations get made and things are said that this is against the law, that's against the law, this is illegal, that's illegal. Um, I'm all for if something's against the law or illegal, then it should be taken care of through the law. And handle it. And if it is illegal and it's against the law, then that will be handled um, through court or however it is. But just making the accusation doesn't make it against the law. Um, and I have, you know, I have reservations with, you know, trying to, in the, in the, in the opinion of the public arena, um, making accusations that may not, could be true or not true. And I always say, if they're, if they're true and you feel that way, then move forward with that. Um, the truth will come out. But um, I feel like if we have lawsuits and things, and of course we need to be updated on them, what's going on. But I, I stop short of you know making accusations that I don't know to be true. Well, well, as the newest member on the city council, I um, couldn't, couldn't second the motion, but I'm not opposed to either, um, because I need to have more information as well. I'm kind of in the same case as you were, in that you know, I need a little more information before I can take a stand. Yes, I would request that we do two things. Okay. Uh, one is have a shade session to discuss any litigation, which I believe is covered under and then also a, uh, a, a discussion on any of the non-legal issues that have been brought up um, so we can get them out and discuss them in public. Seems like everybody is on the same team. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, Thank I don't you. know that we need a... Mr. Reese, will we need a motion and a second to put this off till the next meeting or just well, you, you, could, you could just you could entertain a motion to postpone it to the I September believe, third meeting. I, I believe Mr. Alton that's made that motion. motion. We okay. have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like <coughs> motion passes. Um, next is communications. Um, Several went to the Orleans City. It's time. It's time. Wow, church and community news. That's right. It sure is. It's time for another season, a new season of Unfiltered. And this time, we're taking it back to the church and the community. I want you to join me every Friday evening at 8 p.m. and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for unfiltered church and community conversations on the BDE Music Network on the TuneIn app. Simply download the TuneIn app and search for BDE Music Network and join in for the conversation that's every Friday night, 8 p.m. and every Sunday morning, 8 a.m.
time. <laughs>